used to bag work a bottom apartment Fuck. B, 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 B. You're now tuned into the Apartment 5B podcast, where we chop it up about hip-hop, R&B, sports, love and life. Hosted by Kill. 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 What's good, what's good, what's good? You tuned to Apartment 5B, hosted by your man, Kyle. I got my squad up in effect with me tonight. I got my man, DJ Rack One. What's going on, Rack? What's going on, man? How's everybody? Everything is good, man. I got my man, Tone, from Men of the Dome. What's good, fam? Good, player. No doubt, no doubt. I got my man, Vern, out in the ATL. What's good? Greetings, Earthlings. <laughs> you out there looking dark, bro. I got my homegirl, Porsche. What's going on, Porsche? How's it going? Oh, uh, man, everything is good. And then I got my brother, my man, Ganu. My man since 92. What's going on, fam? I'm good. Peace, everybody. How y'all? All right. Let's go. Yo, y'all already know me. Let's jump right into it. Last week, last Friday, Netflix dropped the Roxanne, Roxanne, John. We're going to chop it up about that. What we felt about it. You know, do we want, who's the next joint? We want a biopic from and all that good stuff. But one of the things that was funny, Nick, who couldn't make it tonight, um, was talking about like yo kill we just talking about the movie right because i don't really know too much about shorty and you know i realized that you know you had different kind of generations watching this movie you had like you know my generation the 40s and up and then you kind of got that mid-30 crowd and you know possibly even the youngins or whatever like that but may not know about roxanne shante so real quick history not that i'm a shante fanatic or know everything but just you know, what it did for me was, you know, I always tell people, you know, the time hip hop spoke to me was through three songs. It was Melly Mel's The Message. It was D- Run DMC's Rock Box. And it was UTFO's Roxanne Roxanne. You know, UTFO, Untouchable Force Organization, three cats, four cats out of Brooklyn. Dr. Ice, Kango Kid, Mixed Mast Ice, and the Educated Rapper. You know, they had right. Roxanne Roxanne. This was the first song that I learned every word to. Like, yeah. I was yeah. I mean, and everything with Roxanne Roxanne. So Uh the thing that was crazy about it, when I heard Roxanne's Revenge, I'm like, damn, because one, this is 84. This is the first time I've ever heard somebody like come back at somebody. Uh Two, it was the first time I really heard a female MC. Now, of course, you got B Street and us girls could boogie too and everything like that. And I'm sure people are older than me, probably 48 and above. They could tell you, you know, real stories about Lisa Lee and all, you know, funky four plus one more. But, you know, that was before my time. Um, So Shantae to me was like the first female MC, you know, not to mention outside of Apollonia. Shorty was my first celebrity (laughs) crush. Like, like, I was so in love with Roxanne and Shantae. I was only messing with girls with braces because I was like, yo, you got to look like shiny, man. Like, you got to I was like on a break. Like, like, nah, sure, you ain't got braces. Yo, get your teeth right. I say to be like, just like so ill and everything. I remember to this day getting on the school bus that day, the night before, you know, Power 99 of Philly, they had a little Power 9 and 9. They played it. I taped it. I'm walking in with my headphones on. I'm rapping it. Everybody's like, oh, shit, you got it. I'm like, yeah, this is Roxanne. Joy. So, you know, for me, she was the first real female MC like that for me to really see um you know so for me you know that's that's my roxanne shantae thing i remember my pop taking me to see out west philly perform it was shantae curtis blow houdini and somebody else but i ain't give a fuck about nobody else but roxanne shantae <laughs> so i was good with that yo Ganu, you got any like memories of shantae from back in the 80s man yeah yeah man um you know, eighty four. I was, I was, you know, I was young. I was, I, that was maybe elementary school and shit. Right. But um, yeah, man. I remember uh, Power ninety nine. Listening to Power ninety nine. Mm-hmm. Um, they was off that. You know what I'm saying? I remember yeah. hearing the record for the first time. I'm, I remember being in school. You know, writing the lyrics down and uh, arguing with people over uh, what she was saying and, and shit like that, man. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I mean, this shit was crazy, man. You know, I, I, you know, first, like you said, the first time uh, we heard a uh, female MC come out and uh, in battle, come at somebody, answer back to uh, to uh, to four dudes. You know what I'm right. saying? Right, and, right, uh, right. 
and, and, and that's the thing I want cast to understand. You know, nowadays is nothing. You know, Drake says something to this person. They said, but in 84, like, this was unheard of. And then, like, yeah. you said, you talking about a shorty coming at four dudes. You know, and then in the back of my head, I'm like, oh, shit. So there's a real rock saying? Like, I'm thinking there was some yeah. So at the time, I'm like, oh, damn, shorty was really rock saying. I wasn't even thinking, oh, okay, this ain't really her or whatever like that. And then, of course, from that, we got the real rock saying and a million other rock saying. Yeah, yeah. sparked like twenty five thousand yeah. records, man. Yeah, like Yeah, it was it was crazy. It was crazy. Right? Anybody else got any memories of Shantae Tone? Yeah, I mean, you know, being being in my early forties, my my brother's like seven years old, older, so I remember him getting the records. You know what I'm saying? Like in the UTFO joints, then she was battling with Sparky D. Right, right. So a lot of stuff with Sparky D and the Play Girls. You know what I'm saying? So I had we I had a couple of records from my brother. And, it was a good time, man, because I hadn't heard females rhyming at the time. Right. It was the first yeah. time I heard a female rhyme. And then, you know, of course, the battles with UTFO. And, and UTFO was dope at the time as well. So it was like, who's yeah. a chick trying to battle UTFO? Crazy. She wilding. But it was a good time for the culture, man. And I think she ushered in the MC Lights and Latif. Yeah. All that stuff started from mm-hmm. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So she's very big in the culture when you look at it from that perspective. Right, right, right. All right, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. So, yo, let's jump right into it, into the movie. You know, um, yo, uh, why don't we start with Canoe? You, you, you chilling in with us tonight. What did you think of the movie? You know, we gonna give it the mics later, but you know, maybe you know what you liked about it, maybe what you didn't like. You know, talk about it. Um, I thought the movie was good. Um. You know, it, it really told her, uh, her like her her background. I, I didn't know that she was she went through so much uh, trauma, man. You know, with all the domestic violence and uh, her mother. You know, I hope I ain't spoiling the movie. Is it is it cool if I you know oh, yeah, talk yeah, about too late? Yeah, yeah, okay. Watching the show. It's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I didn't I didn't realize her backstory was was that deep. I, you know, I, I knew she was from Queensbridge, but you know, like I said, I didn't know how how deep it was. But I, I thought the movie. Um, I didn't like how they how they didn't um they didn't really focus on like I mean I, I know it's Shantae's story but they didn't really focus on like the Juice Crew it, it wasn't it wasn't enough uh, Juice Crew in there for me they 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 touched on Biz um you know of course Marley was in there jerking her and all that kind of stuff but uh <laughs> I thought I, I thought I thought they could have put more uh more well they had Shan in there too but I thought they could have put a little bit more uh Juice Crew and and and, and less on uh. The domestic violence, man, because it was like you know, some of them, I don't know, some of them scenes was like you know, money had her in like MMA moves, and you know right. what I, mean? I was just like, it's a little, little. That was like a little overkill for me, because I, because I felt like they could have delved more into like uh, the the music of it. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. What about you, Porsche? Um, I actually, I thought it was really well done. I mean. I maybe my opinion's kind of weird because I don't have a strong background on her really so I'm kind of watching it sort of a little bit with fresh eyes and I and I thought they actually did a really really good job of conveying her story like even though um I know I read some tweets and some opinions about you know they they didn't develop the hip hop aspect enough or there wasn't as much um focus on the rapping or the music side of her but she didn't really have a lot of like material anyways like what could they have True. incorporated more like so they would have given us a little bit more battles i mean she did enough battles for me i thought it developed her um influence and her ability to battle enough that as a viewer and someone who's learned maybe learning more about her life i got a really good understanding of it so for me i i actually thought they touched on everything just enough that it gave you a good understanding of how she was. But I also agree. I mean, I, I would have liked to see a little bit more Juice Crew stuff in there, but that's just because obviously we, we like the, the, you know, throwback hip hop stuff. So <laughs> that's just it. All right. No doubt. What about you? Bob? Yeah, I, w- I would say um, I actually never thought about Roxanne from a historical perspective until until this came out and like like Portia said I mean it's not that she had a lot of material but in retrospect me watching it she was a trendsetter and this, she did set the stage for the lights and the Queen Latifah's you know and um Rod Diggins and all those sisters to come after her um and like Gary said I I, I could have done I, I just don't I don't like to see 
sisters get abused anyway. So it's, that's always going to be a rough watch for me, you know. Um, so, but I get it. This is this is her story. So I guess she she put at the forefront what she wanted to be told, man. But I I wish like everybody else that we could have got a little bit more music, you know, a little bit more of Marley and everything like that. But overall, it was good. I guess because had she not told the story. I wouldn't have known, you know, I wouldn't have even thought about it like that. Right, right, right. All right, Rack, what about you? Yeah, I'm with Vern on this one, man. Um, I, I wasn't expecting that story. I knew a little bit. I didn't, I didn't know, you know, as far as the domestic violence. I knew she had had some, some issues, but I was not aware of the, you know, the, the depths of it. Um, I mean, for what it was, I'll take it. Mm -hmm. um, she chose not to touch on the music as much as everybody wanted. I guess, you know, that'll come at another time. So I I'll take it for what it was. It wasn't a bad film. Just I, I think everybody expected something totally different when, you know, the way it was built, you know. Right, right. No doubt. What about you, Song? You know what? The film actually was good, but incomplete. Mm -hmm. you know? And what I mean by that is um, it felt like episode one of a good Netflix series on her life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm not mad at it, but I yeah. felt like it was so much more to be desired when it ended. It's like it abruptly ended with this, I'm yeah. passing the torch to Nas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know and I'm like, yeah, there's a whole lot of shit that happened in between yeah. Nas and little young boys rapping for you, you know, and then, then meeting, I guess, Lost the or whatever, all that kind of stuff like that. With Nas history, but it was kind of like, let's just conclude this thing. You know what I'm saying? So I felt like maybe if they were done like maybe a three-part series or maybe even a little a season on Roxanne or whatever, I think we got a full grasp of her influence on her life. But I'm not mad at it overall because it's a story that needed to be told. Mm -hmm. I thought Roxanne is important for the culture of hip-hop because females are very important to the culture of yeah. hip-hop. And she kind of yeah. set the ground for that. And there was a lot of battles back then with the Roxanne Wars anyway. Yeah. You know? We got so many other women involved with hip hop who might not even like rap. Maybe they boyfriend like rap. <laughs> Roxanne Gravy Train and every city that Roxanne Chante was going to, people were trying to battle her after shows. You know what I'm saying? So that's big. Cause so you can also say she's one of the most important early battle rappers. You yeah. Know? yeah. So that's what you know. So I would like to see a lot more of that. Not necessarily too much Juice Crew, but maybe a little bit more. Uh, I know we're in a Me Too age, so some of the domestic violence shit kind of go with the signs of the times. So I kind of get that for shock value and viewership as well. But I'm not mad at it, man. I, I appreciate them doing it. And uh, Neil Long is also good to look at. So <laughs> <laughs> that never hurts. That never hurts. <laughs> it's all good, though. And the funny thing for me, I ain't even gonna hold y'all, man. I was disappointed in the joint. You know what I mean? And it probably was my expectations. And um, I'll explain like this. I want to do a documentary on a hip hop show that I used to do up at Morgan, um, Strictly Hip Hop. But the thing that I realized about this documentary is I'm like, would anybody care about this documentary who didn't go to Bo who didn't go to Morgan during this time period or who didn't live in Baltimore? And me looking from the outside in, I wouldn't. If somebody said, Joe Kill, here's a documentary about Howard University in the 90s and the hip hop, maybe not Howard, because that would be puffy, but Norfolk State with a hip hop show. Would I care about that? Probably not. So what I was trying to do was tie in something that people might care about. So I don't know if y'all remember this cat. I forgot his name, but they called him the Crime Stopper. He was a ball player in Baltimore. Um, something car. I don't remember his first name. But oh, say it again. Say it again. It was something car. It was his last name was C A R R. But the thing about the dude, the CNN did oh, a piece. Oh, talking about uh, the little dude. Yeah. Little guy, uh, Quill. Yeah. I think that, yeah, Kill Carr. And what it was is yeah. that, what it was, they called him the crime stopper because they said he was so nice that when he would hoop, crime in Baltimore would stop. Yep. Like, I heard that. Stop selling drugs. People would stop getting murdered because everybody would just go to his games. So I said, you know what? I'm going to try to freak this into what were people doing from midnight to 5 a.m. on a Friday night? in the 90s while Strictly Hip Hop was on. Well, did we have that effect on them? You know, things like that. And since The Wire come out, has come out, anything about Baltimore in the hood, it, it pulls people in. So for me, doing this documentary, it's gonna be like 60 to 70% that, and then like 30%, you know, the hip hop show to pull people in. And I'm saying all that to say is that for me, I wanted Roxanne Shantae to be about hip hop 70%. 
yeah. and maybe about her background, 30%. Yeah. But is that because is that because we compare it to other ones like All Eyes on Me and um, Straight Outta Compton and those kinds of, of biopics about hip hop? Because those ones are all about the music, all about the shows, all about that stuff. So is that's just my question to everybody. Like, is are we comparing it or? I mean, for me, it's it, it goes back to what people care about. Right. So it, here's the sad part about it, and this may sound bad, and it should it shouldn't sound bad. Right. I honestly, this does sound bad, but I don't mean it. You gotta put it out there. I don't. Not to say that I don't care about her life. I do. You know what I mean? That's why I'm saying give me 20, 30 percent of it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying ignore the story, but we went to see Straight Outta Compton to hear about N.W.A. Right. Not to hear about Dr. Dre's son right, and his right. brother dying. Like, if that would have been 30% of the movie, D Dre dealing with his brother dying, it, it that's not what we care about. You yeah. know what I mean? And again, people are coming from different aspects. Porsche, maybe somebody younger, you're just coming in like, hey, I just want to hear the story. You know, for yeah. somebody my age who knew the story, it's like, I want to hear about the story. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I almost felt like it was overkill. Like, I'm like, okay, the dude from Moonlight and his Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, yeah. He's, yeah. 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 But it's like, damn, she, cool. damn, she in the hospital. Damn. Like, we get it. Like, you know, the mom is, you know, um, you know, poor black mom in the projects living by herself. You know, I hate to quote Drake, but Drake got around. We said, like, something like, boo-hoo, sad story, black American dad story. Like, like that's sad, but that's, that's a lot of people I know story. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, Yo, you know, you got this. So for me, I wanted hip hop. Like, I don't, I wanted straight out Compton yeah. about hip hop. Like with the Pac biopic, I want to hear about hip hop. I don't want it. I don't want a two hour, an hour and a half movie about Pac, Mom, and the Black Panthers, and then a half hour about hip hop, you know? So to me, that's why, like, I was using the example of my hip hop show. I would love to tell 100% about the hip hop show. But again, would people want to see that? I don't think people would want to see that. You know what I mean? What were you gonna say, Porsche? I was gonna say, I mean, in in rock in this in this biopic, like Roxanne, Roxanne, it's hip hop is still very much there, and I think that um, we focus on the domestic violence and the trauma and all that stuff because it's so jarring, and maybe we didn't expect to see it or we didn't know, so that sticks out more than anything else does. But they again, like I, I have to like defend the the biopic because I feel like it did a good job of conveying the, like she was a pioneer in this community and she's also like, you know, has a has she's a battle rapper she's she's um you know like got a clap back to to this track and there was like they did a really good job of developing how she was able to kind of pioneer hip-hop with all of the struggle i don't know to me it was really very well merged together i don't know i don't see it the way you guys do as in it was more heavily on the trauma side. I think that just kind of sticks out more because we weren't really, maybe we didn't know about it, we weren't expecting it, and then the way they sort of, the, the scenes were kind of like jarring, honestly. They were a little extreme, but that's just, that's that's my opinion. I don't know. I mean, yeah, and again, it's all about expectation. You know, when yeah. me, me and Tone did the show about um, when we were reviewing Sky Zoo and uh, Evidence out, you know, it, it was all about expectations. You know what I mean? I had higher expectations for Ev album than they did. So it was kind of like they liked it a little bit more than because I had those expectations. And again, I'm not saying that I don't want to see it. But again, I think as a hip hop head, knowing the story, I want I'm not. And like I said, I'm not saying ignore it. I'm not saying don't touch on it. I'm just saying flip it from the 30 percent hip hop to the 30 percent your life, because to be honest, I, that's what I that's what I care about. You know what I'm saying? I care about the hip hop. Not to say that I don't care about your story because I do want to know that. Right. But that's, and we'll get into this question a little bit later. I've never been a big fan of biopics. I prefer documentaries, really, because, and again, guess what? This is Roxanne Shantae's life. So if that's what she wanted to tell, that's by all means, that's what she wanted to tell. But it's the same way with my documentary. If I want to tell it all about strictly hip hop, I have to understand that it's going to alienate a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people may not care about that. And if you so again, I thought it was good. But, you know, there was things like, you know, um, like I, I wanted to know, like, for instance, and me and my wife kept saying this, 
she was a battle rapper? Like, is that real? Because here's the wild part. I'm a hip hop head to the core and I've always kept my ear to the streets. I have never heard nobody say anything about Roxanne Shante battling the way she was portrayed in this movie. And I would think you would have heard the bread and all that. Yeah, like you know, she's walking around like, yo, the champ is here. I'm like, okay, okay. I like, you know, I was like, whoa, you know, now if this was light or even Latifah, I could feel that. But Shantae, I'm like, I, I'm just again, I'm just wondering, is that true? And I would have loved to know a little bit more about that background of how she became this battle rapper. It kind of like the movie just started, like, boom, she's a battle rapper. And she's killing everybody in Queens. And I'm like, word, like. I've never heard anybody tell that story, which I would have thought I would have heard. During Shantae in interviews, I would have thought I would have heard, Joe. I was a battle rapper, this is how I got, I've never heard Molly, anybody from Queensbridge, herself included, which most people will wear on their chest. Most people will come out like, yo, if you a boxer, you gonna come out with your stats. Like, yo, I've been knocking niggas out for the past 10 years. <laughs> Whereas I've never heard anybody say anything about Shantae's battle and then the price kept getting higher and, I'm battling, I ain't battling for no 250 or less. Like, yeah. no, you got people right up on the project. Like, yo, Shani, we got people out here in Hollis. One of them. I'm like, word? So, and again, I understand you have to sometimes embellish. I felt like in Straight Outta Compton, Dre embellished his character a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he was just knocking people out. Yeah. Dre was just knocking niggas out. <laughs> he running up in offices with shit. Yeah, yeah. Plus, like, nigga, I'm going. And I'm like, I don't think that's the way it happened, Dre. But <laughs> I think Hollywood got to embellish your, 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 yourself. Um, it's funny because when my homegirl's daughter played her little sister Latifah, and the funny thing is, is when she hit me like, oh, yo, um, Ed is playing Latifah, I was like, oh, shit, so they got lied in this movie. So, again, my expectations went up even more because I'm like, oh, Latifah's going to be in this shit, so it's really going to be hip-hop. And then when I seen it, I was like, oh, damn, her sister's name. <laughs> you, know, and, you know, now my anticipate, like, I was up, like, oh, shit, you know, and then it, like, brought me back down, like, oh, that's Latifah. Mm -hmm. um, and then the crazy part to me is I'm watching the movie, and I'm like, how much time is left? And I'm like, yo, there's only 20 minutes left? Like, yo. <laughs> like, and I agree with Tone that, like, I felt like that would have been a great first episode. Tone hit it right on the head with that. Like, that would have been a first great episode mm -hmm. of a two-part series. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because I was like, yo, what else are we going to get to? Like, I wanted to see more of that Death Fresh. Like, when him and Mo her and Molly went at it, yep. it was like, don't worry. Because Death Fresh crew is my favorite Shantae song. So I'm open. I'm like, oh, snap. Oh, that's how it went down. Okay, like, that's dope. But that's what yeah. I want to love. And the only other thing, and my man Lil was telling me this today, shout out to him. And he was like, yo, kill, man. How did Shantae get all this goddamn money? Because she said she ain't make no money from tour. She ain't make no money from, you know, selling no records. She was battling for 250. So, like, where did they come up with the 10 grand to buy the son? Like, he like, yo, kill 10 grand in 1986 is like $100,000. Like, 10 grand now is a lot of money. And then he was like, yo, how the fuck her mom save up $20,000? Yeah, I was thinking that too. I was doing that math. Yeah. Like, yo, it's hard for somebody with a college degree, with a wife and, and, and master's degrees to save up 20000 cash. Yeah. How does this chick Word. in the project scrubbing toilets save up $20,000? Like, they don't unless it's dope money. Right. It, 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 it probably ain't all clean. It can't be all clean. And, and that was my thing, just with because I'm, if I'm not mistaken, Neil Long said something like, you know what I mean? Toilets I had to scrub? Like, my nigga, you scrubbing a lot of toilets to cook up $20,000. <laughs> well, when we think about how much $20,000 is in 2018, that that twenty thousand to change my life right now. I mean, I know y'all know more. If I get twenty, I'm joking. I'm joking. But I'm just saying that that's the extent that I was like, yo, what kind of hustle shorty got with four daughters saving up twenty thousand dollars? It's all for me to save up two thousand dollars with one kid. You know what I mean? So there were just some things here and there. But you know, and again, with anything with a biopic with me, I with hip hop. I'm going to pick that shit apart, you know, because I'm sure there's somebody watch like, come on, kill like, but that's just me. It's hip hop. You know what I mean? So I'm always going to like nitpick and be like, was that true? Or I don't get that. Or I didn't like that. But I mean, you know, and I think the other thing about Shantae is that a lot of people don't know. Even my wife, who's my age, didn't know. Like she was like, did Shantae have out a lot of songs? And a lot of people don't know. Like 
at that time and point in hip hop, we were still kind of dealing with a 12 inch era. Yeah. So we, you know, you had the Roxanne's Revenge, then she had Death Fresh Crew, which way came out like six, seven months later. Then you had Go On Girl, her, her debut album, Bad Sister, didn't drop till 89. Yep. Five yeah. years. That's crazy. Yeah, you know, that's five years from the five first time. Later. Her. Yeah. You know, Roxanne Shantae. And what a lot of people don't know, and, and again, I, w- I wish they, not that they would have parked on this, but a lot of folks don't know that they had to come from New York to Philly to get a record deal. Oh, and out the pop art records out in Philly to get their first record deal. You know what I mean? So, you know, not 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 saying I wanted to harp on that, but like I said, I would have lo- I would have loved it. And, and like I said, I give props to Tony again for hitting the dead on the head. Great first episode, because I want to know, like, boom, well, how'd you get on cold chilling? You know, and how, how did things fall apart with Molly? Because that wasn't it, because she was on in control. Molly's in control in 88. Yep. So yep. I don't think wacky record. Yeah, you know, I don't think the relationship just disseminated from 85. Like, they were still making records. So, like, to me, like Tom said, it was just so much more to be told. And, and you know what, dude? What's up, Tom? And, 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 you know, they waited too long for that debut album because by the time 89 came, oh, man. was large. MC Light had dropped. Yeah, so much was going album. on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, she kind of got lost in the mix with old school style of rhymes. And yeah. yeah, yeah. Spirit after that. Yeah. yeah. So landscape had totally changed by then. Oh yeah, landscape changed. Yeah. And I think too, and and again, uh, and again, this is why, and I'm gonna go into it a little bit later. Why I like documentaries more because a lot of times I'm searching for information. Like I don't know if y'all ever felt this way. I hate reading a magazine or reading an article and not learning anything new. Yeah. You know what I mean? So about the music. Now, of course, I didn't know about. And again, even with everything that they're saying, you know, and again, not the domestic violence, but like. How much of this was 100% true? You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm interested, you know, because, Tony, to your point, I, I want to say I know with her being on pop art, I'm sure it was some label drama. Yeah. Cool Chillin' didn't really pop up till 87, 88. So that's probably why it took so long. But like you said, you got a great point that when you look at a rap, it's almost like, like Mo D. When Mo D was the shit in 84. But by the time 88 came, he wasn't the shit no more. And it was like that was almost... You know Shantae's thing. I know a lot of people I read online. You know had people had had beef with the way they portrayed black men. In it. My only response to that was, but if that's how black men treated them, then what else you gonna show them? Like you know, to me it wasn't the to me it wasn't a situation of like oh they're making black men look bad. If if the nigga stole her money, then that was bad. You know, yeah. if the is hitting her, then that's bad. You know, so I didn't have a problem with that. Um, but I just know a lot of people were wondering too about how she was able to freak and i don't even know if this is true because i've heard it's true i've heard it's false that the record label paid for her to go get a phd but that's not true that's yeah, not, yeah that's, that's not true, not true. it's no. not true she, at all she apologized not true. For that. yeah yeah she yeah. recanted that story back in yeah. 2009 yeah yeah yeah, yeah. all right like, so does anybody know like portia it's all like what was the what was behind that like what she just lied um yeah, like I, I, don't think she, I mean, like, I, can't, I can't stop it up any more than that. Like, yep, basically, she, she had she had a contract with um, another label. It wasn't that particular label. It was a different one, but it didn't. Um, it's unclear whether it covered her schooling and actually she didn't end up going to school. That was all of the things that she, um, that was claimed about her. I think it, it said she had gotten like a master's or a PhD mm-hmm. and that was false. Um, they did extensive like digging to find out that that wasn't actually the case. And then she didn't even attend a college, not even like at any yeah. post-secondary um, institution. And then when they approached her with that, she then mm-hmm. what, apologized. That, that, that's when she apologized for it. So that's what I that's what I heard. I mean, and, and I see, now, now you tell me <laughs> now you tell me she lied. Now I don't believe none of this movie. Now I, don't <laughs> yeah. I, read, I read I read the same thing. Like, who who says, hey, I got a PhD psych? I was just like, I don't got no PhD. You know, like so now I'm like, wow. are you a battle rapper? Because I had people like Bezo was sending me articles saying that th- this was real, you know? So it's one of those things where like you got people, I'm like, nah, I heard it was fake. People like, nah, look at this article is real. But so, you know, I-, I-, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why you would lie about that. Cause I mean, but then again, I don't know why Rick Ross would lie about being a CEO. Cause if you dig enough, you find out he was a CEO. So, you know, she, ha- she I think sometimes people have to try to um, validate themselves 
And so since she got jerked out of all her money from uh, you know, from record labels and stuff, she had to make make some story to make it look like, okay, I did win in the end. And I think that's where the PhD angle came from. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, yeah, that's a good point, but it's just like with the internet, <laughs> you know, like, I don't get why Rick Ross was like, I wasn't a CEO. He could have freaked it like, yeah, I was a CEO, but I was bringing the coke in or whatever. Like, like, right, right. Uh, but then you like, you're right, like, sorry, just kidding, I wasn't a CEO. It's like, what? like, what's going on? But all right, so tell me this. What, how many mics, Rick, how many mics do you give this joint? For what is so, so for what it is, I'm giving it the three. Yeah. I'm giving it a three. Um, it could have went, it could have been better either way. We could have gotten more hip hop. We could have gotten more drama. I mean, like you said, there's a whole backstory to half of that stuff that it just seems like either they left it on the cutting room floor or just decided not to even talk about it. Right. Um, I give it a three, man. I'm going to watch it again tonight, but it gets a solid three right now. All right, no doubt. What about you, uh, Tom? Out of five mics? Out of five mics. <laughs> like, you know, everything is going to be five mics, man. I grade everything. Everything. Literally on five. Anything oh, I can go that I grade it on a five mic scale. Any, anywhere, anything that happens in life is five mics. What you got, bro? All right, man. I'm, 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 I'm going to give it a three, man. All right. All right. Three. three. Good dude, what you giving it? I'm gonna have to uh, to agree with the fellas. I, I I can't give it no higher than three, man. I mean, it was a, it wasn't bad, but you know, for for me, you know, for 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 me to be a kid growing up on Roxanne, you know, and in 2018 they dropped a movie about her. You know what I'm saying? That that was really dope, but like you know, like we were saying, we they could have did better with it, man. So I would All give right. it a three, bro. All right, what about you, Porsche? I give it a three and a half. Okay. I, uh, I mean, it, I can't give it higher than that, unfortunately. Oh, I thought you were going to go to four, four. Yeah, I thought you were going to go to walls off. I'm like, three and a half. I give it a You got to beat this movie to the death, and you only give it one mic high. Oh, no. Well, I, the thing right. is, is that, I mean, they're, the biggest, I think the biggest area where they drop the ball, and I, I can't remember who said it, but it was, maybe it was you, Kill. Um, they just started the movie with <laughs> the battle and that was like they again i i did like that they developed it enough that we kind of assume that she's had some dealings in the neighborhood and and she's made a name for herself and a reputation but they could have developed that more and, and that's where i i that's the only critique i would give it on the hip hop aspect is they should have developed her battling background a little bit more and not start the movie like that i mean it, it just seemed a little bit weird to start it that way but other than that i mean yeah all right three and a half bro what you got just for, uh solely for the nostalgic sake of it I, I, I guess i gotta give it a three but i did leave the movie like uh okay that's it <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, like a rice cake. It yeah. was, it was nutritious, but it wasn't. Oh, filling. it wasn't filling. Compared the movie, the rice cake. God, <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's, 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 hey, bro. Analogy, bro. That's a good, good analogy. Good <laughs> compared to rice cakes. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Um, for me, same thing. I for nostalgia, I'll give it three. If this was just straight up and down, I it would probably get like a two and a half. Because. Yeah. I, I know myself. I'll never watch this again. Yeah, I, I won't either. Yeah. You know, it's rare. <laughs> Certain movies that if it come on HBO, if I'm flipping channels, mm. I'm stopping to watch it. Straight out of Compton is one of them. Yeah, yeah. I watch Straight out of Compton on repeat forever. Yeah. You can watch that all day. Yeah. yeah, there's no way yeah. that I would ever. If I saw this on cable, I like. I would zoom right past. Like at first, I was gonna let Nay stay up and watch it with us just for her to see, and I may still let her see it just to see a let her see the female MC aspect yeah, of it. Yeah. But um, yeah, like I know I, I would never watch this again. Um, and again, it just goes back to what. And then again, this is what I feel like you have to do with a biopic. You can make the movie you want to make, or you can make the movie that you think other people want to see. Then it always comes down to that when you're a creative person. So when I'm creating music. There, there are files of beats that I have that I've made that I like, but I don't think 
the audience would like. You know what I mean? So it's like when you're a creative, you have to decide, do you want to make a painting? There are a lot of people who I know who are creatives who make paintings just for them. That's different than the paintings they make for other people because they understand that this may not sell. So again, it's your story. So if one day somebody said, hey, we want to hear Kill's story, and I hit you with the whole story about fibromyalgia and my medical diseases, y'all may be like, that's cool, Kill, but where's the records? Where's the beats? Where's the (laughs) hip hop? Like, that's what we fucking love about you is the hip hop and all that. And you talk about your medical conditions. Fuck your health. We want to be. (laughs) Like, you know, (laughs) A little bit, but like, yo, we want to know how you use the machine. Like, if there's a a, a biopic of Primo, I'm sure people want to know how he made him come clean or how, you know, he got on that. Like, we don't want to hear about him growing up in Texas. You know, we want to hear about group home and big than Google. Yeah. So, so again, it being a biopic, you have to decide which story you want to tell. And obviously, this is the story Shantae wanted to tell. Answer me this. Like I said earlier... I prefer documentaries. What would you prefer? Would you do you guys prefer if there was a documentary done on a group? Or, or let me do this first. Who would you want to be the next biopic done by? And then would you prefer a documentary on them or a biopic? Um, Vern, who you got? That's a loaded question. Um, so uh, the first person that I would I got four, but I would say Outcast um, is somebody I want to see on. If the biopic is done right, if it's done like a straight out of Compton, yeah. But if I had the gun to my head, I would always go with a uh, documentary. Okay, okay. What about you, Porsche? I prefer documentaries. Um, and I, I think, I, I just think that there's less dramatization in documentaries. Maybe I'm naive, I don't know. They, they tend to, just because biopic seems a little bit more flashy and a little bit more film like so I I tend to go in thinking that there's going to be embellishments anyways documentaries are always a little bit more true to story and I use the word true to story like loosely because we've seen documentaries that are way off um but I, I prefer to be honest I don't really want to see a biopic about anyone I just think the last few like all lies on me for me. Like I, I saw that and I, I kind of yeah. sat in the theater and I wanted to cry and then I wanted to like throw something at the screen and I wanted to like get on the phone with somebody and be like, why did anyone <laughs> allow this? Like it, I was so distraught over this disaster that, that played for two and a half hours that after that I was like, just stop, just, just <laughs> stop visiting people in hip hop, leave them alone. Just leave them alone. So that's uh-huh. it. But but if so for your documentary, who would you want a documentary? Um, I I think again, I don't really think anyone's anyone now. I mean, it's been exhausted. I I think I would have to agree with Vern. Outcast. They they're the only ones that are that sort of are interesting enough that I would like to know. I would love to see. Um, how it all came to be with with Big Boy and Andre. I think Outcast would be phenomenal, but who knows? All right. Now I and and, and on the Outcast thing, I feel like I almost feel like with these documentaries and biopics, it's similar to like hip hop when people say like, "Kill, do you want another Outcast album?" There's an asterisk next to everything. It's like, yeah, I want another Outcast album if. Dre is rhyming and organized noise is doing the beats. I don't want no singing. It, like, yeah. want another comedy album? If comedy <laughs> doing shit else, putting all his attention <laughs> on rhyme and not playing no Muslim nigga who looks just like Khan. Basically, every play <laughs> you know, um, it just be common in Selma, nineteen fifty six. Like that nigga <laughs> like, just travels through time as common. <laughs> um, you know, I feel like it's an ass. <laughs> like you know. I would want the Outcast movie if it talks about the beginning and if it talks about the end. I want to know about the breakup. I want to know about that. So we get, but see, those are my expectations. So this is why I may be harder on it if they just talk about like even with on the organized noise documentary that they did. That was dope. It was a little bit more. I wanted again. I wanted a little more meat on it. You mm-hmm. know. So again, I think this is why a lot of times people have different mic ratings is because of if you do an Outcast quick biopic or a documentary you better talk about why they broke up or mm. you know to me it, you know that's cool you know how they got met at the dungeon and all that but 
I want the meat behind it. Like I feel like that's what they got with trial. We got the meat. Mm-hmm. We got the mm-hmm. we got the down and dirt. Mm-hmm. We, got, we the, got the meat. This is why they don't like each other. And okay, this yeah. is that to me, that's why that was such a dope documentary. Mm-hmm. And I feel like so many other documentaries try to just keep it nice. And it's like, nigga, we don't want the nice shit. We want to know how things fell apart. So, um, good news. What about you? Documentary or biopic? Or who would you want the next one to be about? Um, to me, you know, to, to piggyback, you know, what everybody was saying, bio, biopics, if, if the shit is done right, um, documentaries, um, as long as the shit is done right, man. Right. Um, as far as the next person or, or group, um, I mean, if, if you if you look on YouTube, man, you see a lot of you see a lot of little documentaries and, 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 and shit about uh, about little underground hip hop art. Like, I, I wanted to see a, a boot camp documentary, and uh, uh, I think Souls of Mischief got one, and, and and you know, like a lot of little hmm, really little underground cats that we fuck with back in the nineties got little underground shits that's you know that's out there. But um, I don't know if I had to choose, I, I really I really couldn't say which one I'd like to see next. I don't know. <laughs> it's shit out there, no doubt, no doubt. Um, Rec, what about you? Uh, I'm documentaries all day, man. The, the biopics, man, that shit can go left or it can go right. You, you hit the nail on the head. If the right person is not directing it or the vision is not being, you know, shared, that shit's gonna go to shit real quick. Um, so I got two groups. I don't think this will ever happen, but I gotta have a Wu Tang movie. Yeah. I'm gonna do it. I got to. And, and like you said, Kill, right. you got to talk about all the shit. Don't don't sugarcoat it. Yeah. Don't bullshit. Like talk about it. Um, we want to know why you can't get, with the exception of the ones that have passed. We want to know why you can't get all of them in the room at the same fucking time. Like don't don't beat around the bush. Talk about that shit. And uh, the other one is EPMD. You come on, man. That, that's you tell me they can no tickets for EPMD. Mm. That would be dope. That would be dope. Come on, EPMD. Man. You tried to, you tried, you robbed him. You tried to kill him. But, but yeah. <laughs> we gotta have the meat. When I yes. watch, I like, agree with oh, Yes. When they watch the sun, they try to yes. just please over there. Right? And I'm I, like, I, I want the state fair turkey wing. Right. Man, I don't know how you could be cool with somebody that had you laid down in your house, bro. I mean, <laughs> me I, 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 I mean, me I, ain't, I, ain't, yeah, I, ain't, I ain't cut, I ain't cut I like that. Know. I mean, no idea. <laughs> I mean, but but that but that's what I mean by that's the meat. Gotta have the meat. Yeah. <laughs> You know, we did. It, I, I hate it when people like dealing with the radio and dealing with things like, you know, I hate when artists come on something like, well, we don't want to talk about that. Well, motherfucker, the only be uh, on here is to talk about it. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, 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 don't do it, right? I don't understand that. Campbell was beefing with Martin, and whenever she would do interviews, they'd be like, you can't ask about Martin. It's like, but that's all we care about. Like, right. we're supposes to ask about right. school days. Little shop of horrors, house <laughs> Like, what else are you supposed to ask about? Like, that, how many times we gonna ask if you really kiss the kid and play? Like, right, you know, like, that's what we care about. So we don't don't even come on the show if you don't want to talk about Martin because that's what we want to hear. You know? uh, but, I mean, I'm telling. What about you, man? Uh, well, docs are better for me because they feel more authentic at the end, end of the day. But if the people that did straight out of Compton do all of the hip hop, <laughs> then I'm down with that. Even Dr. Right, right. Dr. Jerry E-Man or G.I. Joe on a movie, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, 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 like, it looked like a big screen production and not that disaster that, that Tupac shit was. Woo, boy. I Ooh. still haven't watched bro. that straight through. Bro, bro yeah. I watched that on a fire <laughs> stick. <laughs> that shit hurt my heart, man. But um, man. if you're going to do a biopic, I would like to see one on Public Enemy. Yeah, and I got that. I like to see it done mm. it tastefully because Flavor Flavor is like Eddie Kane Jr. on the Five Heartbeats. <laughs> Let's dig into his life a little bit, his struggles and his upbringing and shit like that. Chuck did a pretty dynamic individual. Oh, yeah. yeah so you can really yeah. do oh, yeah. character. I feel like a, a public enemy joint would be real dope. Crazy. Uh, an EPMD joint, like you guys said, man. Now, a real EPMD documentary would be like that tribe joint. Because some real shit happened with them when they went up in Parrish House. Yeah. Because before I go on tour with you, me and you gotta go shoot the fair one one time though. You know what I'm saying? Before we can even go on tour, cause you had them cats could have shot me, or I could have yeah. shot somebody with yeah. my life. So even they got a pretty crazy story. Yeah. But their squad, his squad. Yeah. To get Eric Sermon jumping out the window back in like oh yeah. three. No doubt. Yeah. 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 It's, a yeah. Lot, it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of backstory to that yeah. that they just they yeah. don't talk about. They they kind of pumped that on drink champs because they kept it clean. Yeah, and you know and Nori, Nori know how to shut you the fuck up by keep talking. 
Yeah. <laughs> but all that you won't let nobody answer the goddamn question. That shit kills me. Yeah, you gotta relax. <laughs> All right, all right, no doubt. And I think for me, of course, it, it's documentaries. Um, and for me, I think, well, one thing, I think with biopics, like Portia said earlier, you got to make it Hollywood, you know, because once you're putting in the movie theaters, the number one thing is putting butts in the seats. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, that's the number. So I feel like that once you go a biopic and you're dealing with Hollywood, and I'm finding this out just by writing scripts and trying to get in that game, it's all about you know, first week sales. So it's like, if you're doing something in Hollywood, it's about how we gonna put asses in the seats. You know what I mean? Um, I think one thing that they do a great job of, they do a great job of casting these people. You know, yeah. they look just like Pac, the dude look just like Big, the chick look like Sean. Well, mm -hmm. of course, maybe he didn't look like Pac. I don't know. No, Here's the thing. no he, he, sorry, continue. <laughs> The whole movie was a disaster. The, my the my biggest thing movie. with the pop movie that was bad, that the reason why I knew it was bad, because everybody knows I'm not the biggest pop fan, and I knew everything. Like, I went into this movie hoping to learn something, and I learned nothing. So I was like, this is really bad, because I don't even know that yeah. much about pop, and I ain't learned nothing. But I think that's number one. Number two is that I think Straight Outta Compton was such an anomaly, mm -hmm. it's because their story is a Hollywood movie. You know, the story yes. embodies violence. It embodies, you know, Six. it emb it embodies somebody dying in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like those things played a huge part. And again, this is not to take away from the movie, but I think it also did so well because we're talking about a group that made fuck the police at a time when police are killing black men, women, and children. So you also put into this is the group that made fuck the police in 1988 and we're looking up at 2016 and the same thing is going on it made it even more polarized you know i know people young people were like yo i didn't know how that's how easy he died so their their story embodied uh, like that would have almost been like a scripted movie you know where it's like well, sorry, and they had like the ice cube outburst and the and they talked about that and they didn't mm -hmm. shy away from it and Straight yeah. out of Compton was was very very well done. It was very well done. Right, and I think too it was. So I think too the the part about that makes it such the anomaly is that most people's stories don't have all of that. Yeah, yeah. you don't have the violence right. of Straight out of Compton. You don't have the violence of Cube now messing with you know not messing with them. Yes. Should night in the picture. You got all this violence. You got Easy E dying. So their story was almost a Hollywood picture as it. Yes. Most people's stories aren't really Hollywood movies. They're documentaries. I love Big to Death. I think he's the greatest MC ever. His story was not a Hollywood movie. Yep. You know what I'm saying? In my opinion. You yep. know, right. that's why Straight Outta Compton, I think, did so well. The person who I want a documentary on is Blastmaster KRS One. Hmm. And I oh, wanted so. I wanted mm. from right. minded to right after by any means. Basically, out of here. Because when he dropped out of here. I was like, yo, this video is going to be epic. This is going to have, this is going to be crazy because he's talking about everything. Everything. The video in the black room. And I was like, yo, this shit is whack. Like, how do you take this epic song about, and when people who don't know, you know, Chris is homeless. You know, this dude is living in a shelter. You know, he's doing graffiti. He's hip hop 24 seven. Story. Yeah, his social worker, Scott LaRock, ends up becoming his partner. You know, becoming a DJ, making some, in my opinion, one of the top 10 greatest hip hop albums ever in Criminal Minded. You know, one of the biggest battles, you know, my personal favorite hip hop battle with Queensbridge, you know. Mm -hmm. And then you're getting Scott dying in a violent act trying to protect the nice. To me, his story to me is the closest thing that we're going to get to what Straight Outta Compton was, you know. Um, and then his bounce back, you know, I was the, you know, I know everybody loved Rakim, I love Rakim too, but during that time, it was KRS a bust for me. Like, you know, Rakim was the god, changed the way people rap, great. Criminal minded was it for me, you know, so I'm finding out yeah. he died and I'm like, oh man, like, what's, what's coming next? What's, what's the, and then I hear my philosophy and I'm like, blown away, like, oh, blown away and then yeah. by any means necessary, you know, and it can stop right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna put the parameters on it. I'm talking BDP 84 to about 89. Like, yeah, we can stop. Yeah, we don't need to go there yeah, yeah, yeah. or nothing yeah, else. Yeah. But that to me would be the next uh, um, documentary. And because prayerfully, it will be footage, you know, at, at the rooftop. And, you know, I just think that, that time in New York City and hip hop 
it's just you know bananas or whatever um with that so yeah that that would be the next joint that that i would be looking forward to but y'all tell me this so we've got straight out of compton we've got notorious we've got all eyes on me we've got roxanne roxanne are there any joints i'm missing how do you rate how do you rank those four we all know straight out confidence first yeah. but right. what, what what comes next tone what comes next out of straight out out, out of confidence and you know <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Hey, I mean, you can put whatever you want, wherever you want. Like, like you like yo, straight out Compton is first. All eyes on me is last, and whatever the hell other two you name somewhere in the middle. Like, yeah, the tours would be two, I guess. And like, I'll take the Shantae, and then that shit will pop the last." <laughs> Damn, right. was that bad? I'm gonna have to watch yeah, that tonight. Yeah, too. yeah, it, 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 it wasn't good, bro. All right, so here's the thing. Let's dive into this for a little. What was so bad? about the pop porsche you're the, one of the biggest pop fans i know what was so bad about this movie i'll tell you and this is i've i've been asked this so many times so i have my answer it's tupac is a very multifaceted person he was he was not only a rapper but he was also a very charismatic person and i think that you cannot you cannot hire an actor to portray that. It, it, I don't think there's an actor alive that could have, I don't even think Denzel, if he looked like Tupac, <laughs> could have done that. And Denzel is one of my favorite actors of all time. So for me, I just think Tupac is, is too much for anyone to actually um, be able to portray properly. And that's where the movie failed was when you're watching this, if you pay attention to the, the person who's playing Tupac, he's always only ever got one mm. aspect and it's this aggressive sort of defensive jump at you and like mm -hmm. just want to bite your head off kind of person and Pac wasn't like that all the time like i used to watch tupac on every interview like i grew up with tupac so for me i watched all that stuff in real life i didn't it, it was the real tupac doing this so when i see it on this movie i'm sitting here thinking did you even study Pac before you took this role on? Like, it, it's it's a it's disrespectful. Like, it, it, as a as a fan of Pac and as a fan of hip hop, that movie in its entirety, from beginning to end, is absolutely disrespectful. And except for when they played actual Tupac tracks in the movie, when you heard Pac actually rapping and it was like his soundtrack going, that's the only time I enjoyed it. Other than that, I was like, yo someone do something like someone do something so that's what i think it's crazy you say that because maybe it was like you said there's no one actor because pox life is a hollywood movie you know what i mean so that's why even not being the biggest pop fan i'm like yo i want to see this because this dude like you said he's so polarized i mean yeah. anything that you could write in a script is you, you can't write a better script than pox life you know yeah. so yeah maybe it was the acting Vern, what about you um uh, Bro, after straight out of Compton, I'm good. Um, to be honest with you, when talking about these, but you asked about t why I didn't like the Tupac so so much. Right. I had the opportunity to hang out with Pac a couple of times. Two of my homies that I went to school, high school, and college with, produced some joints on on, on his track. Um, what's the one of them? When I Get Free and I Forget the Other One. And like Porsche said, he wasn't he didn't have a battery in his back all the time. In fact, it surprised me one time we were hanging out in VIP. And he was trying to holler at somebody just like I would be trying to holler. It wasn't this this larger than life, super, super nigga. I mean, for real, if, if you want to go there. Um, he was just a regular cat. I think um, what I really didn't like about it is this, this it's like he was a preachy, preachy all the time on this agenda in the movie. And it was like, it was so manufactured, man. It, it didn't seem natural at all to me. And so that's that's why I didn't care for it. Another point too, the hard part about I think what made Straight Out Compton so dope is that Dre and Q were there every day. Yeah. Um, even with Dre saying, you know, it was being on a set every day that gave him the inspiration to even do music again. You know what I mean? So you had the people who were there telling you it happened like this. Out, of course, Dre's embellishments of knocking everybody the fuck out. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> don't have it. 
Then it would be like, no, it didn't happen like that, or no, it didn't happen like this. Nah, bro, you not. That wasn't how I was acting at that time. Yeah. It's hard to pull that off if you don't have, even if you have, you know, and God, you know, God bless his mother's soul, you know, the mom isn't there. And even if mom was there, you still, you know, I feel like that person has to be there. Like, I don't yeah. know if Ice Cube and Dre's mom could have been on the set a straight okay. out of Compton, you know, pulling the string. But the new, did you see the movie? Yeah, I saw All, all Eyes on Me. Um, what did you think of it? I, I, you know, I, I have to... It was, yeah, it was it was, it was kind of whack. I I'm not the biggest Pac fan. I'm, I'm yeah. like a fan of Pac pre uh, pre Death Row. Yep, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's right. right. That's right. Um, yeah. Strictly for my niggas. Um, that album, man. Um, I forget the other one. Uh, I get Apocalypse around. Now. Yeah, yeah. yeah two Apocalypse Now. Yeah, those joints, but um, but yeah, it it, it was kind of trash. It, it was kind of the same as uh, Notorious, man. Just, you know that that was kind of that was a, kind of a whack job for me too, man. Yeah, no doubt. no doubt. And Rick, you haven't seen it yet, but tell him what about you? No, I, I got, I got, I got a caveat though. Um, you know what the what the similarities in both movies are, man. Multiple directors, multiple pushback uh, as far as the timelines. So you're not gonna get a solid product when you know everybody's not on board, man. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking about that when y'all was talking, man. My bad. Go ahead, man. I had, I had to say that. Though. Tom, what you got? Uh. You know, Pop obviously had, had a dynamic personality. So kind of like Portia was saying, it's hard to mimic that. So I think the Tupac Resurrection documentary was good enough for me. You know what I'm saying? I thought it talked to people that knew him, that cared about him. Yeah, that was fine. Yeah, Pop was a lot of things to a lot of different people. He was mad sometimes. He was cool sometimes. He was quiet sometimes. You know, he wasn't this super thug. I mean, one of my partners used to hang with him in D.C. a, a little bit as well. And he was like, man, you know, dude, behind closed doors, laid back, cool dude. I mean, you know, so, I ain't no burn. You know, we had this conversation because yeah. he came around a few times in, in Atlanta. So it's just like, this Hollywood put a S on the chest. Mm -hmm. It was over the top. The ending was terrible. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When they, oh, my God, man. They just couldn't have done a worse job at, <laughs> at putting it together. It was, it was like a long pop video, not a good one. <laughs> <laughs> You know, shit pissed me off when it came to that. Do not want to watch the movie now, God. Well, you know, you, they should have taken their time. If you're gonna do something dynamic like with him, take your time, man. Do your due diligence and really show the fans a lot about his life that you didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't leave this movie knowing any of them. I could have wrote that shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, and Taurus was trash too when you think about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was upset with you, Taurus, man. I mean, like what I heard, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, I, I just read this, I don't even know if it's true, but um, apparently they didn't, they wanted to release this Tupac, um, this All Eyes on Me, when his mom was still alive. And she absolutely, I think, I think it was written somewhere that she read over the script and she was like, there's no way I'm allowing this to be, I heard to, that to be, yeah. yeah, that she was, yeah, she was, was a lot like hell bent on, on not allowing this to to move forward with with actual like you know yeah. production and taping and whatnot and then as soon as she passed away that's when they started everything yeah, so i they, think they the inaccuracies it. yeah like jada put out a statement like mm -hmm. immediately after the the opening night and she was like that's not at all yeah. how it went yep. down so it's just i think yeah, like everything about that was just a miss, and I and I I wish I could delete it off of the face of this earth and just flashy thingy <laughs> everybody from MIB so that no one remembers wow. seeing it. Like it's just we should have listened to John Singleton in the beginning, huh? <laughs> I, I remember, got... remember when he got took off the picture? He was like, "This shit's gonna be trash." I'm just telling yes. you. Yes, yes. Yeah. I, I got one worse than all the eyes on me though. That Nina Simone joint with Zoe. I didn't watch that. Oh, I didn't yeah, watch that. I, yeah, no, yeah, I, 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 I watched five movie. minutes. Oh, hold tight, hold tight. I didn't even know that joint came out. Oh, boy. On Netflix. Oh, boy. Yeah. It's yeah, bad. I know what was it's on Netflix. It's bad. But but watch don't, watch, don't watch that. Watch the don't. actual documentary. Please don't. Watch the actual oh. documentary with yes. Nina herself on there. Yes. I, yeah, I watched that. the documentary. I didn't even. But yeah. it, again, that goes back to Hollywood. And we yeah. got to remember that once you step into Hollywood, putting people in the seat, Hollywood doesn't want new actors like that. So Zoe Saldana, you know, coming off of what's that? Guardians of the Galaxy and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So we need somebody who can put 
people in the seat. You know, we don't want uh, who are they talking about getting NDI? Yeah, yeah. We don't yeah. want her because we got it. So that's the always thing. You, it's, it's almost like signing to a label back in the day. It's like if you want to sign to a label, just know you have to put out some bullshit. Like, don't sign to a label if you want to try to do a hundred percent boom bad hip hop because. No major label is going to allow you to do that. Same thing. If you want to do a, a dope movie, if, as soon as you get Hollywood money behind it, they want their money back. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, your unknown actress who looks just like Nina Simone is not going to do it. You know, and then on top of that, and this is no disrespect to Nina because she's great to me, but a lot of people don't know about Nina Simone. Like, yep, yep, you know, yep. So, that's right. the other problem, too, is that you're dealing with a polarizing artist who did amazing things, but most people don't even know about the amazing things, you know, that they did. Um, so, yeah, so we got Shante looking like she's averaging about a three. You know, Porsche did went three and a half. I went two and a half. That's probably averaging out to about a three. I suck at math, but we'll just call it a three as is. Um, so give them all your information about the website, run your newest article up. Oh, the new uh, enter the dome.com, E N T E R D A D O M E. Uh, the newest join is uh, about DMX. Hmm. It's coming right on time right now because X, uh, they say he's going back to going to prison for a year 12 months. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, man. I heard. And, and, and you, know, you know, I call it DMX the forgotten child, man, because dude, life is pretty tragic with all that talent he has. And you know, he could end up being one of the goats of the game, man. You know what I'm saying? So, I kind of talk about his upbringing, his life, and his challenges. Yeah, so check that out, man. So that's the newest one right now. I got one on KRS one coming up soon too. All right, what you what you talking about, Chris, in this joint? Say what? I said what you talking about, Chris. Like what you speaking on? Oh man, just upbringing. There's a lot of deep things that he went through in his life, leading up to him becoming the MC. And also, I got to touch on some of that shit he did about Africa Van Bottom. Cause I was a little pissed off at Chris because <laughs> he didn't address on the drink champs. You know, he didn't address that situation with Van Bottom. Like, like he should have to me. And I love yeah. Kirk one. And I know he respect Bam Bada as one of the forefathers of the culture, but at the same time, Bam Bada fucked up. Yep. And, and Karis one would not scold him at one bit. And I had a big issue with, with Chris on that one. But at the end of the day, you know, he's one of my favorite MCs. He's number two on my all time list. And he does have a pretty dynamic story with Scott LaRock being a social worker, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm gonna go pretty deep on that one. All right, that's what's up. Right, give all your information, bro. Oh man, uh, you can follow me on Twitter uh, at DJ Rep One. Uh, Instagram is Worldwide Rep One, and checking for mixes uh, SoundCloud backslash J Rep One. All right, no doubt. Good news. Give them all your stuff, good brother. Yo, hit me on the gram at Mr. Gary Gnu. Hit me on Twitter at Mr. Gary Gnu seventy three one. No doubt. Porsche, give them all his stuff. Uh, Twitter and Instagram is at uh, Cherche La Porsche. All right. We, we getting that You Got documentary soon? You know it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm copying that book, man. Real talk. And, I read uh, the, uh, the little uh, piece they give you, uh, the little, I think it's like the first chapter. This shit was pretty good. It was pretty dope. I'm going to copy his book. I'm going to support. Let me find out you guys got, got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to support. I'm going to support. He got a little, he got a little story. I'm going to support. All right, all right, all right. And give me your stuff, good brother. V Chandler 10 on Twitter, VE Chandler 10 on uh, Instagram. All right, no doubt. You already know what it is with me, Kill889, Instagram and Twitter. Got some dope projects out right now. Me and my man Jamal Gasol got our joint. No Joy Without Pain, part two. We have got, thank you, good brother. We got um, physical copies of those to cop. You can cop it on digital downloads. Me and Sight got an album out, Continuum 10 Songs, all produced by me. And I still got my joint out with my man, uh, D-Bills, out of Philly. So you can get all that stuff on my website, willmakebeatsforfood.com. As always, I appreciate y'all taking time out y'all busy day to hang out with me because, hell, y'all could be doing something better than this. So I appreciate (laughs) y'all for hanging out here with me every night, making this show dope. Everybody, uh, and, I, and I truly mean this, man. Everybody who's been a part of the show, you guys are what make this show so dope. You know, anytime people give me props for the podcast, I'm like, trust and believe it's not me. It's the, the people I've been blessed to meet on Twitter. GNU, um, being the only person up here that I know, like outside of Twitter, you know, but the rest of you guys have right. stepped up and made this show um 
just as dope as what it is. So just to know that people are always giving me props for it, but I always send them y'all away because y'all would help to make this so dope. So I appreciate the hell out of y'all. Appreciate you. No doubt, no doubt. So you too, brother. Anytime. Good looking. So I will check y'all next week, good brothers and sisters. All right? Yes, sir. All right. Fresh, fresh. Y'all watch the show, show. Listen, watch the girl go. go.